Sheila Feely, Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. I'd like to introduce my co-host, Craig Pasqua. OCO, Rose. Well, I think welcome. he said hello. I oh, did. he said hello. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to all of you to Native Voice TV. Today our guest is Kelly Gamboa from the Red Earth Women's Society. Nice to be here today. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hello. What is the the Red Earth Women's Society, Kelly? Well, um, the Red Earth Women's Society started about probably 10 years ago. We've been gathering together. It's um, native or indigenous women throughout the, the community, San Jose, Santa Clara County. Um, it started out just as a safe space for women to gather and talk about stuff, you know, it, um, whether it was DV or doing cultural projects. Um, one of the main focuses of the group also is to do community service. So we do a lot of activities throughout the year to keep us busy. One of them is we host the elders booth at the Michigan New Year every year. We also do a Toys for Tots drive for families in the community. Um, we do a lot of different things. We feed the homeless during the winter months, stuff like that. You know, and in the meantime, we um, try to learn about culture and, you know, things that are important to families. So and this is lo this is based in Santa Clara County, California. Yes, all yes. Right. San Jose is our home base. We have members from all over the Bay Area, though. Okay, I just wanted to mention California because this is all over the country. So. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, like San Jose in the area, you have have a lot of members probably from different parts of the country here not just right. this area. What other tribes? Um, we have Lakota women. We have a lot of women from the Southwest. We have Apache. We have Yaqui. We have a few California natives. We have um, pretty much all over, you know, we're, we're, because you know, the Bay Area has a large relocated population. So we're, we're pretty diverse in ourselves. And has the organization grown over the years? It ebbs and flows uh -huh. with the community. Um, right now we probably have a, a core group of about 15 women. We've had as many as 25 and we've had as few as five. Uh -huh. You know, but the one thing is, is we never stop. We never stop meeting. We, ne we always hold space for each other no matter where we are, or what we're doing. You know, we try to meet regularly at least twice a month if we can. Oh good, okay. And you also help, I guess, help each other with issues that might arise in your families or your lives? Yes, it, it, the group originally started to address the issues of um, domestic violence and you know, violence at home, whether it was partner violence, parent-child violence, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, we originally started to uh, gather together like that so that the women in our community had a safe place that they could talk and feel um, comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and know that, you know, what was said there stayed there, of course, but um, in a cultural way, you know, mm -hmm. we start our group with a prayer, um, you know, we all have each other's phone numbers, we keep in touch, you know, if we know that a member needs extra support, we'll kind of tag team her, you know, keep in touch. Just because um, as urban natives, uh, you know, a lot of the women are out of touch with their, their tribal communities. And so a lot of women have issues that are, you know, serious issues, of course, D DV couldn't be more serious, but being far away from home, you know, e even if they were born here, they still are missing that connection with their tribe. Sure. So. And families. Yeah, exactly. Extended families, moms, grandmas, people who would support them mm -hmm. through hard times. So, you know, that's how we really started. And we've just kind of um, grown and changed as the years gone by, you know, we've, um, every year we make a decision to do something different, you know, so, um, you know, community service wise, stuff like that. But we have our core things that we do for the community every year. Well, that is so important because so many people like myself have been re relocated to this area and you've lost contact with your tribe yeah. or your family, in many cases your family. Um, and a lot of times you're isolated out here and you're providing a valuable service for, for those, um, uh, community members that uh, are no longer you know within their tribal homeland yeah uh, you know and it's a really healthy group the women are so dedicated you know they're they're really there for each other it's it's really comforting to know that there's a place to go 
Um, we're always looking for new members, of course, but um, we do have a core group that's never given up on the group, so that's been really nice. Now this year you've really taken on a monumental, extremely important <laughs> project. Tell us about that. Oh my goodness, yes. It started out as a, 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 started out as a small seed of thought and what it was was a, a couple years ago I was at a conference um, in Albuquerque and you know I was there by myself. I don't like to travel alone so I was kind of uncomfortable. There's people from all over. It was a, a women's conference. It was the Women Are Sacred conference. And so um, I was sitting there in this giant group of people and I don't do well by myself usually. And I saw a familiar face walk by and it was Elisa Alvarado. So I was so happy to find somebody. So we kind of hooked up during the, the conference and you know had lunch and stuff together a few times. And when we both came back to San Jose, we decided that we needed to do something about what we learned there. So you know, went back and forth for a while and then, you know, we finally settled on the missing and murdered indigenous women, which was the, the focus of the conference. So um, we started out with just the red dress display and each red dress um, symbolizes missing and murdered women and girls, of course. So, and I, you know, they say each dress is in honor of a woman. I say each dress is in honor of a hundred women. You know, because they're so underreported, even in California, you know, um, they're underreported for a, a variety of different reasons. But the point of our, our project this year was to bring awareness to that, to, you know, because it's a, a, a national epidemic that does affect us here in urban areas. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring awareness to that. So people, you know, we want people to be our law enforcement, our, our county, city, state government, we want them to be responsible and accountable to us, you know, because we're here and we've never left and we're not going to, so. And what should they be aware of? Well, they should be aware that we are the most underreported when it comes to, um, you know, violence against us, murder, rape, domestic violence. Um, for whatever reason, those things, you know, um, law enforcement doesn't do a good job by us. You know, I did find out at one point that our, like in San Jose, our, you know, right here in our hometown, um, the, the rape test kits hadn't been tested. They'd just been sitting, languishing somewhere, probably crumbling into dirt, um, you know, and so that was another big thing to us. You know, we wanted accountability. It's hard enough to, when you're, when you're a survivor of rape, it's hard enough to go do that test kit. You know, it's almost revictimizing. So for them to just put them on a shelf somewhere and ignore them was horrendous to us. You know, so we started to push people here and there about that and we did get some results. I know um, Cindy Chavez did post on her website that she had some additional funding set aside to test some of the kits. We want them all tested. Mm -hmm. You know, we want it, we're gonna keep pushing too. So, okay. you know, and I think the, the underreporting comes from, you know, that, I don't know, the institutional racism that we all are, you know, fighting against all the time. Institutional racism is a little different, you know, just because it's, it's a little more, um, undercover, you know, it doesn't show right out in front like like other, you know, like face-to-face -face racism, you know, um, it, it comes out in, in ugly different ways that are very subtle but still there. You know, the fact that um, the media, for example, the media doesn't like to report on the indigenous women. You know, in 1999, Marlene Marie Bueno, which she was 17 years old, is my niece, she was murdered in a brutal way and, um, I think part of what stuck with me through that whole thing was the media was there for a hot second and they just moved on. They just moved on. They never thought twice about her. You know, even during, the, it, there was a big old trial. They caught the guy, of course, and you know, all this stuff happened and it was a long drawn out thing and, and the media was there only for a hot second. You know, they didn't care what happened to her and that's always bothered me. You know, it's always bothered me. And then, you know, you see other, other murder cases, you know, like the poor pregnant lady from Modesto, you know, um, her case was all over the media. And my niece was missing for a week before her body was found. And, you know, I compare that to the um, Lacey Peterson. You know, she was, and you know, God bless her and God bless her family, but, you know, the media coverage for that was outrageous compared to my niece. You know, she was missing and murdered also. And, and you know, the media just walked away. 
you know. So, you know, things like that, you know, they're, they're so bothersome to us. And, you know, we need to be represented. We need to be protected. I'm sure there's uh, a lot of our viewers here will be interested in the th things that you're doing and, and the program that's going out there, and they want more information. And I'm sure we'll be able to post some links to that. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested in how our county, Santa Clara County, is responding. I know that your group, I've seen the dresses all over. I've seen them, you know, on, online and, and in displays. And so I'm aware of the group, but how is the county or county representatives? The county representatives are just coming around to us, you know, because we decided this year that we're not going to be quiet anymore. You know, we're, we are going to be graceful about our our wants and our needs being met, but we want them to be met, definitely. The county um, is um, in the process of issuing a proclamation, you know, so, you know, regarding the missing and murdered, the state also has, you know, so from on Monday they voted and now from now on May will forever be in the state of California in memory of the missing and murdered Indigenous Women's Month, you know, and that's huge. That, that brings awareness to what we're talking about here. We do have an exhibit up at 70 West Heading at the county building there, and I invite everybody to come out and see it. I think we have a, a few pictures of okay. projects, so maybe we can take a look at those pictures, and you can tell us what this is. So um, the first time since the, the May Day March started, they asked a contingent of the Red Earth Women's Society to lead the whole march. And so we did that, and that's a picture of us. That's, that's part of our contingent there, but. Uh, four of us walked in front of the whole march to start it off, which was really cool because it really brought a, you know a lot of awareness to what we're doing and who we are. And our next slide, let's see what we have here. That's a uh, an exhibit up at San Jose State University. There's over 300 red dresses hanging there. Um, Soma de Bourbon, which is, she's part of our group. Um, she also teaches there. She, this is, I think, the second year that she's put up the exhibit and. What's really cool about her exhibit is there's actually names attached to some of the dresses oh, and no. information. Mm -hmm. It's very poignant. It, it's when you go see them, it, it's it's kind of deep, you know, it's it's emotional, you know, and even those 300 dresses, they still only represent at least 100 women each. And this is at San Jose State San Jose State, State, State University. University. That's yes. very powerful. Yeah, and it's powerful. It it's very powerful. And it's almost sacred. And you walk yeah. on there and you get, you get that vibe from the students and the, the yeah. faculty that are there, anyone around that area yeah. you've seen that. That's a real education. It is, it is. We had a, a panel discussion there with a few people from the community on Monday at the, at the university, at, um, also too at Conexion, the Native TANF office, the County Mental Health Building, and I believe at Indian Health um, Clinic, there's also a red dress display with all the information on it. And then tomorrow night is our closing ceremony at 70 West Heading, and I invite everybody to come out. We might have pictures of that, 70 West Heading. Yep, yes. there it is. Okay, so this was we, this yeah. was a pretty elaborate display as well. Yeah, we put up uh, young girls this year because they're part of that. You know, there's a lot of young girls that aren't counted in the statistics because they're children. I don't know why that makes them different, but there's a lot of uh, even babies missing, you know, unaccounted for. One of the one of the dresses I don't see it in the shot here is is a a southern dress from the border, and um, it represents all, because another big huge part of the numbers that are missing are the the women from down on the border. You know, the atrocities yes. that are happening to the women and children down there. That they are represented in our exhibit, though. Um, our exhibit. What was cool about it was all the women in the group sewed the dresses together. Um, it was a little scary because on the day of the sewing, I said, how many people here have sewn? And nobody raised their hand. Uh -oh. so, <laughs> it, but it you know what, you we pushed through, we pushed through. And, and the dresses are beautiful. They are amazing. beautiful, they are beautiful. It was an amazing, amazing you know, thing to do with them and it gave them all ownership in the project too, so. They're beautiful and yeah. the dress we have here was one of the dresses that yes. was, uh, made at the, uh, w with your project, and the necklaces? The necklaces were made by chairwoman Louise Ramirez. She's the chairwoman of the Ohlone Costanoan Esalen Nation, and um, she is part of our group now. She's a newer member, but 
she didn't sew, so she made all the necklaces herself for each of the dresses, and they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. It, it does make a powerful statement when you see yeah. the dress. Yeah, it does. It does. Knowing the love and the care and the prayers that went into all of the sewing, you know, and then when we first put up the display, we had a ceremony there, which was really nice. So, you know, it, it's been it's been quite a project to work on. So we we're determined to not let this go. This is going to we're going to continue this, you know, into next year and the next year and the next year. That's going to be part of what the Red Earth Women's Society does forevermore. Um, you know, we're going to continue to do the other community things that we do, but this is going to be a huge important part of what we do continuously because we're not willing to just do a project and walk yeah, away. Yeah, walk away from yeah. it. Especially yeah. something this important. Yes, yes. So what are you going to do with the dresses? Um, they'll probably be put to sleep for a while. We're going to keep them up as long as we can until the end of May. Um, and then we'll we'll put them away. We have some additional stuff we're gonna do for next year, you know, in conjunction with the dresses. So we have a lot of stuff going on and this year we're not gonna do it all two months before. We're gonna actually start on it now. What's well, amazing what you did in a short amount yeah, of time. It was kind of crazy, but <laughs> you know, um, it was worth it, it was worth it. And, and if you ask any of the women in the group, they would tell you the same. They were really happy with the way it came out. And the exhibit is really beautiful at 70 West Heading. It's very simple, but it's very beautiful. That's at the county building, so mm -hmm. people can still go by and take a look at it. And if you miss it this year, you'll probably see it next year. Yeah. It's gonna be at the county building through the end of the month? The yes, till the end of, oh no, the display's coming down tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah, that's what they gave us space for, but that's okay, we're gonna work on that too. Now that's good, it's good to be in a government facility. So everybody who walks through that building, a lot of people do, can see this display. Yeah, at the opening ceremony was really cool because during the, when we put it up, there was a lot of people walking by and we were talking to them, trying to pull them in. A lot of people were asking questions and stuff like that. So at the opening, the reception that we had on the third was really cool because I looked in the crowd and there's actually people who were just walking by who came back to the reception. So that was really nice mm -hmm. because they were asking a lot of questions. They took a lot of the literature we put up and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. I was thinking you may want to make some extra dresses next year because um, every time I wear my regalia, I, someone comes up and says, can I purchase that? Can I buy that? Really? Yeah, well, not every time, but, but, yeah, I, mean, but I was thinking for fundraising. Might, we were thinking of that. that, yeah, we were thinking of that. I think when we take down the display at 70 West Heading, we're going to probably put the dresses out to the other agencies that already have a dress, so there could be a couple more, just until the end of May, just to keep it going. And then um, we're all gonna start working on a couple more dresses because we wanna reach out to other agencies to have one in their That's lobby. Excellent. Yeah, and, but when we have another additional project too. I don't wanna say yet, because the group will freak out when they know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't know yet. <laughs> Only a couple do. <laughs> well, you're doing amazing work. And yeah. I know we have a dress at Conexion and we will definitely keep it there through the end of the month and support it in any way because you know, at the community agencies, that's where people come, and that's mm -hmm. where we have to educate the public. Yeah. You know, in, in public settings. I had a young coworker approach me yesterday and ask me about the dress in the lobby there. And when I sat with her for five minutes and explained to her, I looked up at her face and she had tears on her face. You know, she was so overwhelmed and she said, you know, I knew this was going on, but I didn't know to what proportions, you know. So, and she has a young son, you know, that she's gonna talk to about it and she's gonna bring him tomorrow night to see the exhibit and stuff because we, we need to, you know, talk to our, our young men, our men, our sons, you know, our nephews and stuff to, to let them know, you know, how to treat women. Right. You know, we come from a culture that women are revered and we need to get back to that. Not that we're better or anything like that, but you know, sometimes that like today I went to a training at another agency and I was, I brought snacks. So I had all kinds of bags in my hand and a bunch of the employees ran right by me. And I was like, oh, I'm not used to that. And I started thinking, am I spoiled or what? You know, but no, it's my culture. Nobody from my culture, from my community would have walked by me like that. Right, right. Somebody would have said, let me, let me give you a hand. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're losing those things that are so exactly. important, you know, so exactly. important. Um, 
Carl Siegel and I attended um, something one of the council people put on at a park. And after the program, everybody was, they had food for everybody. So we walked by and we looked at these long lines and there was a long line and towards the end there's an uh, elder standing with a cane. Aww. And you think, we would never have that. You yeah. know, they would have been served. They would have been first in line. They would, you know, but they were in the line with the wheelchairs and the elders in the back, and it was just shocking to see something it's like that. It's shocking. So maybe we, we could teach, you know, the, the rest of the community. Yes, yes. You know, and it's just about modeling that healthy behavior to the youth that we we work with, even just our own kids our, within our own family circles, you know. Um, to hear like in the grocery store, I hear kids telling their parents no and stuff like that. And talking back to them. Yeah, it's kind of outrageous, you know, it, but you know, at the same time, you know, it, it's sometimes when we lose our culture, that's what happens. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's a big part of our culture, who we are, how we treat each other, you know, that's such an important piece. But if the farther we get away from it, you know, the, the more desensitized our children become, you know, even today, you know, the, the, with all the media stuff, TV, you know, um, video games, all that stuff, all it's doing is desensitizing our children. And it's a sad thing, you know, it's, it's teaching them violence and stuff like that, and it, it's, it's to no good end, you know. Well, I was, my kids were probably what they call latchkey kids, because two working parents, you know. Um, these kids are, are worse off than latchkey kids because they have all this stuff to deal with, you know, right. social media, the violent games, you know, I, I haven't found one video game that's not violent. You know, I found one with little cartoon characters and at the end he got squished. You know what I mean? So oh, I finally found one I could play, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so I don't know, you know, I think it's, it's, I think one of the big important things that the Red Earth Women's Society does is keep in touch with our culture by learning, you know, we're so diverse the group, um, we like to trade information about our culture and bring a teaching, like we'll learn how to make a California basket and maybe next month we'll do a Lakota project or a Southwest art piece, you know? So we keep that culture alive, you know? And we, we and you can bring your kids too, it's not just for adults. And even if men wanna come, we invite them, you know, it's okay, you know, so. You know what someone asked me was, um, with when they say women and children, well, it's actually women and girls, but they go, what about the boys? You know, because there are little boys that are yeah. stolen, little children that are there stolen. Are. And I think um, that's the focus, but that doesn't mean they're left out or not included. They're, they're not of. left out, you know, especially like when we're talking about the atrocities on our border. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely women and children and you know, whole families are disappearing and you know, being separated and stuff like that. But um, we're looking at statistically what's reported. You know, that's all we can go by right. is what we know. But we, we do understand that little boys are stolen, mm -hmm. that grown men are abducted or murdered, of course. But for some reason, that's not how law enforcement, they don't, you know, they don't, those numbers are counted, you know, a lot more than the women and children. Right. Now, the name Red Earth Women's Society, is that something that your group, is it, that's unique to your group, or is that a? Um, yes, it is. We started out 10 years ago as Motherhood is Sacred. Um, we were supported by a different program, and as the years went by, that support kind of waned. And so we separated ourselves from that agency, and we continued on as um, Motherhood is Sacred for a minute. And then we decided that it was time for a change. Since we are self-supporting, we do all our own fundraising, we do all our own footwork, you know, we're not connected to any agency or anything like that. So we decided that it was time for a name change too. And you know, we just thought of ideas and that was the one that was voted on. You picked so. a good name. Yeah, I like and it. And you do good work. Thank yeah. you for all of the work. Thank you to all of the group. Thank and you. This year was wonderful. It was nice, yeah. And we're looking forward to bigger and better things next year. <laughs> and we're here to help. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. I appreciate that. And thank you for all the work for those beautiful red dresses. Yes, they and are. What they beautiful. represent. Um, we all have to remember what they represent. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, Native Voice TV. We'll see you again next week.